All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to force feed a snake who's ill and requires sustenance, I guess, to get over the illness. Bear had this illness about a year and a half ago. He had zero potassium in his diet. Uh, vets didn't even know how he was still alive. I don't know why this happened. He went from t being totally fine to all of a sudden just not. And then all of a sudden he was fine again. But then now a year and a half later, you know, literally everything was fine. He just ate two weeks ago, showed zero signs of being ill. He went into shed again and he's still kind of like a couple days until, until he uh, will actually shed. And I noticed he was looking a bit off. He was looking like how he was a year and a half ago, all ill and sickly like. I don't know if you can kind of see him squirming around, but uh, he's he's sh like shaking a little bit because he's just so weak. Um, so to get things started, I'm gonna have a catheter, which I've just lubed up in some egg yolk because I don't have any more lube. I've mixed up my solution in a syringe. Quit it. Just chill out for a second, buddy. I normally use carnivore care, but I had to pick this up. Um, instead, as a substitute, I don't really like it so far. It's almost like a paste as opposed to a powder. Can you chill the fuck out? Okay, so what you want to do is firmly grab him, him by the head. It is obviously going to be easier if you have someone helping you, but I don't have someone helping me. And this is unfortunately not my first time doing this, having to do this on a nightly basis. Forceps tongs, whatever, whatever you want to use to get, pry open the mouth. I'm just using a pen, which I just prop right in there. Normally he kind of chomps down, but he's not right now. Grab the catheter. And if you look, you don't want to be sticking it down his air pipe. You want to be sticking it down his throat. So just slowly and gently work that down there. If you're doing it right, it should slide down with zero problems, zero issues unless they start bending up their neck here. It goes without saying, make sure your hands and everything are clean and sterile because you don't want to be passing on any further infections. If you feel you kind of hit a little bit of a spot, don't be afraid to pull it out and stick it back in. You want to make sure you get the whole length of the catheter in, otherwise they're just going to spit it back up if it's not far enough down. Just slowly and gently because you don't want to make you want to make sure you're not hurting the animal here. It's kind of kinking up a little bit, so just trying to get in that last little bit here. He's hating this right now because this is again not his first time, so he kind of knows what's up. Okay, so I got the full length of the catheter in. Get your syringe. Get the dog hair off of it. Buddy. Get the syringe and the catheter. All snug and tight so it doesn't pump out. Slowly pump that food in. Slow. You want to make sure you have their head upright so it flows downwards nice and then they don't spew it up. Bear in this case, so this mixture is not just that carnivore care stuff. Um, I added uh, an egg yolk for extra protein. I mean, might as, might as well because I'm using the egg yolk or egg, egg white for lube. Um, a little bit of extra, uh, electrolytes, some ground up calcium with magnesium because turns out you need magnesium in order to digest, or sorry, in order to break down. Um, the other minerals and vitamins in, in your diet. And in his case, he needs that potassium. So in order for his body to be able to break down the potassium, he needs an added boost of magnesium because those two go hand in hand. So, as well as obviously added potassium into it. So unfortunately for you, buddy, I do have a second dose for you. So you're going to have to hang tight. So I just move this, make sure you're not going to lose this. Give me a little awkward here for a second. I'm gonna have to close down now. Mm 
Oh no! I almost built it. I know why. I know. I know, that's so terrible. Make sure you get out all the air bubbles. Because you don't want to be pumping a stomach full of air. Clean it off. Get that catheter back in nice and tight. And finish up that last bit of food. Quit pulling that way. Okay, well, you gotta see my arm. Oh, there you go. Straighten up. There you go, buddy. We're almost done, baby. We're almost done. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. Oh! And that popped out, and that's fine. We'll just call it a day. Slowly. I can't emphasize enough. Slowly pull the catheter out, because again, you don't want me ripping anything here. See? Not so bad, buddy. Not so bad. Ever so slowly. And that's it. Made a bit of a mess on your head. Sorry. You'll be okay. So, if it is your first time needing to force feed a snake, I would des definitely suggest asking someone who has experience in doing that. Otherwise, you could very much so run the risk of hurting your animal. Um, after you pull the catheter out, just kind of hold them upright for a little bit more, just to really help the, uh, the, the fluids go down. You don't want them barfing it back up. Um, if they are weak or... What is the word? Or if they just, they don't, if they don't want what you fed them, they're going to try and throw it back up. So just let gravity do the work. Just hold them upright. So then that way you don't have to do it again and or everything's not wasted effort. Just chill out and you're fine. So let them down for a few minutes. Let them run around. If you kind of see the stuff coming back up in their mouth a little bit, hold the neck upright again um, to try and get that back down and uh, yeah so that is how you force feed a snake I hope none of you have to ever have to do it because it really sucks and is very stressful especially when you have to do it on a nightly basis um, but best of luck to you if you do need to do it uh, if you have any questions uh, let me know and I'll try and answer it to uh, the best of my ability Thanks. Where's the stop button? There it is. No, it isn't. Oh.